And Congressman Justin Amash remains the lone Republican lawmaker in the country, apparently, calling President Trump's actions impeachable. And tonight he held his first town hall since making that call and explained why volume two of the Mueller report moved him. That's where the special counsel describes 10 potential instances of obstruction of justice. I'm confident that if you read volume two, you will be appalled at much of the conduct. And, um, and I was appalled by it. And, um, and that's why I stated what I stated. That's why I came to that conclusion, because I think we can't go, we can't let conduct like that go unchecked. Congress has a duty to keep the president in check. We have a job to do. And I think we owe it to the American people to, uh, to represent them. And that's why I took the position I did, and I would do it whether it was a Democratic president or a Republican president. It doesn't matter to me. Well, the town hall that came late today came hours after Amash wrote an extensive Twitter thread accusing Attorney General William Barr of misleading the public on the facts in the Mueller report, simply in order to help the president's false narrative that the investigation was unjustified. The Michigan congressman, a lawyer by training, first called the president's behavior impeachable early this month. In return, the president called him, of course, a loser. Amash is a founding member of the House Freedom Caucus, which was created actually to promote open, accountable and limited government the Constitution, and the rule of law. Amash has been denounced now for what he said about the president by his party and is already facing two Republican primary challenges. According to Washington Post, one of them has raised $60,000 in the eight days since Amash made his statement about the need to impeach this guy. For more, I'm joined by Michael Steele, former spokesman for the House Speaker of John Boehner, and Greg Brower, former U.S. attorney and partner at Brownstein, uh, Hyatt, Farber, and Shrek. Uh, let me start, start with Michael on this. Uh, what do you think about this situation this guy found himself in when he decided the president should be impeached and then the decision to hold a town meeting? Your thoughts for the whole thing? Look, I mean, I think that Justin Amash has been a pain in the neck to Republican leadership in Washington for a long time. And he's a pain in the neck because he is a principled, nerdy guy willing to speak up when it would be easier to stay silent. I think that what he's doing right now is entirely consistent with the principles he's stood for, the libertarian principles he's stood for since he began running for office. I think that he should be admired for doing it, whether or not you agree with his conclusions. So the principle, of, which I grew up with understanding, of course, the limited government concept of a conservative government, you know, it, it goes back to Lord Acton, too much power corrupts. And the idea that the less power given to the hands of public officials, the better. That's a conservative idea. And that's what he's for, you say. Absolutely. I think that he believes in checks and balances. He believes that the executive branch of the United States government has grown too powerful at the expense of the legislative branch. There's a reason that the legislative branch is Article 1 and the executive is Article 2. And he sees this as a small step towards correcting that imbalance and making sure that the legislature holds the executive accountable when necessary. Well, U.S. Congressman Amash told participants in the town meeting tonight that the president of the United said, as you just said, Mike has to be held up to a higher standard. Let's watch. We should expect the president to uphold the law, to, to, to have the highest standard more than anyone else, more than anyone in our government. We need the president to be ethical, to be of high moral character, and to do the right thing. And uh, I, the, the pattern you find in the Mueller report is of someone who does not meet that standard. Well, Greg, it seems to me that what I'm getting on the reporting since we were on the air tonight is the uh, town meeting had a number of voices tonight, some standing O for his principles, but then you had the people who were partisan saying they don't like at all what he's doing. Hmm. Well, uh, Chris, I would, I would uh, say that most Americans should applaud the representative for what he's doing for two reasons. One is he's acknowledging that he has read the Mueller report and he understands just how important the findings are, uh, of the report are, particularly the volume two findings and conclusions with respect to obstruction of justice. And second, and most, more importantly, he's willing to say so out loud. As you know, Chris, many members of Congress, even Republican members of Congress, agree with everything Justin Amash is saying, but they're simply afraid to say it out loud. 
So to see a member stand up and so articulately explain why he's saying what he's saying, why he has concluded what he has concluded about the Mueller report is, is remarkable. Do you think, uh, just objectively, do you think this president can defeat a member of Congress? Well, it depends on the district, of course. Uh, it's certainly possible. Uh, I think increasingly, though, and I think the reaction from Amash's constituents reflect this, increasingly people are figuring this out. The Mueller report helps. Uh, live testimony in a congressional hearing by Bob Mueller would help a lot more. That needs to happen. Yeah. But increasingly, I think the, the president is losing his grip on members of his own party, even in Congress, as the facts come out. Yeah, well, you might be right. To my earlier point, by the way, while the congressman, Amash, received praise from some Democrats for what they called his courageous stance tonight at his town meeting, Republican constituents tore into the five-term member. Let's watch that. You get to make the political grandstanding that raises your national profile. You are now a national household name. That's called political capital. And you are hoping to launch your star bigger and brighter than District 3. You just talked about how you did better in District 3 than Trump. Do you want to talk about how the last election you got the least amount of support that you ever have because you haven't supported the MAGA agenda? Now, that's, that's your that's right to do so. but. It, it's your right to support whatever you want, but you also know that you have no future in this in this district because of that as a Republican. You know, Michael, that sounds like the MAGA had talking, and that is what I hear in every poll I look at in the Republican Party. About 90 percent, roughly yeah. nine out of 10 Republicans do not want any deviation from Trumpism. Yeah, I mean, the NBC Wall Street Journal poll, he was at 90 percent support among Republicans this month. That ties his record high. I think that the perception of the Mueller report's reception helped that. And I think that's why Representative Amash's actions are so rare and so striking. He is doing something that decreases the chances that he will be an elected official in January of 2021. He's going to have, he has, as you mentioned, two primary challengers. He's going to have a tough road. The president will target him. The president's allies will raise money for his opponents. And that's why it's so striking that he's willing to stand up publicly, offer his opinion, and publicly defend it, not only on national television, but in front of his constituents in what looks like a, you know, a high school or elementary school in his district in Grand Rapids. Well, let me go back to Greg on the same question. What do you make of the fact that he out there, he stood up, he made this declaration. It's almost like Martin Luther, here I stand. And he goes out and does this, apparently based on tonight's town meeting, he wasn't reaching any of the Republican MAGA hat wearing people. So who is he listening to? Who's listening to him? Who's he trying to talk to? Well, I, th I think uh, at bottom, Chris, he's listening to his, his inner conscience. He is doing what Jim Comey and others has, has have told us is important to do, and that is speak up, not just shrug and sort of conclude that, well, that's just Trump being Trump. Um, there's nothing we can do yeah. about it. Let's move on. He's calling out uh, the facts as he sees them. And I think that's important. And I'll say, Chris, one more thing, that as a, a former Republican elected official, I will tell you that there is nothing worse than, than deciding what to do and what to say exclusively based upon the next election. It is a miserable experience and existence for a politician. And we need, obviously, more politicians to do and say the things that are right, that are based upon standards and principles, and what they think is, is factually correct and maybe politically unwise, but to say the right thing, to do the right thing, as opposed to worrying about the next election. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.